The claim that Bitcoin was built primarily to be a store of value is false. Many of Satoshi's statements that are put forward as evidence for this claim were taken out of context, and when you put them in context and combine them with all of Satoshi's writings, it becomes undeniable that Bitcoin was not built primarily to be a store of value, but built for payments. The reason I'm so confident about this conclusion is that I went ahead and read everything that Satoshi has ever written publicly. Hundreds of forum threads, scores of emails, and more. And the evidence, in my opinion, is just overwhelming. I noted every time that Satoshi made reference to anything that could be even remotely related to store of value or Bitcoin being used for payments or commerce. I put all these references on my website in a single article. The article is very long and probably pretty boring to read in its entirety, so this video is meant to be a shorter summary of what I found. And here is what I found. The final tally, after reviewing all of the forum threads, emails, and other sources, is that Satoshi mentioned Bitcoin as a store of value eight times, and Bitcoin for payments 34 times. Also, you can break it down further and look at all the times where Satoshi solely mentioned Bitcoin as a store of value or solely mentioned it for payments. If you do that, he solely mentioned it as a store of value four times. He mentioned it for both store of value and payments four times and he mentioned it solely in the context of payments 30 times. To help you see this visually, I put together a timeline of all the times Satoshi mentioned Bitcoin in these contexts. Here you can see the times he mentioned store of value, both store of value and payments, and payments. You'll notice there are quite a few times where Satoshi mentioned Bitcoin for payments that are all clumped together. In fact, quite a few overlap. Apart from emails and forum threads, there's another piece of interesting evidence, Satoshi started building a distributed marketplace in the original code. In fact, if you view the commit where Satoshi eventually removed the code, you'll see things where he talks about reviews, making advertisements, and he mentions a few different things that are clearly related to commerce. There's one last bit of evidence as well, the white paper. Now, store of value proponents like to mock anyone that mentions the white paper, and that doesn't make sense to me. Suggesting that the white paper isn't important to understanding Satoshi's understanding of Bitcoin would be like suggesting that it's unimportant to read Computing Machinery and Intelligence to understand Turing's view on artificial intelligence. They took the time to convince their thoughts into a comprehensible format for others to read and understand. Why wouldn't you read what he wrote? Of course, the white paper is fairly long, so I didn't fully quote it in the post, nor am I going to do it in the video, but it's obvious if you look through what he posted that he wants Bitcoin to be used for payments. You can go ahead and read all of these quotes yourself. When you review all of Satoshi's writings in their totality, it's pretty obvious that he was building Bitcoin for payments. And that forces people who are claiming that he was building Bitcoin for store of value to cherry pick. There's a couple really good examples of that. Dan Held, one of the proponents of Bitcoin as a store of value, did it in a Twitter thread that he posted earlier this year. So let's look at one of these examples. Dan Held posted a Satoshi quote. As a thought experiment, imagine there was a base metal as scarce as gold, but with the following properties. Not useful, no utility. And one special magical property can be transported over a communications channel. The next quote he posted is another Satoshi quote stating, if there were nothing in the world with intrinsic value that could be used as money, only scarce, but no intrinsic value, I think people would still take up something. I'm using the word scarce here to only mean limited potential supply. So let's look at these quotes in context and see if they really are as strong on the store of value side as he seems to think. If you look at the full quote in context, he left out some very important details. Dan's original quote was this top section, and the second quote was this bottom section, but there's something in the middle here that is kind of important. Satoshi states, if it somehow acquired any value at all, for whatever reason, then anyone wanting to transfer wealth over a long distance could buy some, transmit it, and have the recipient sell it. Maybe it could get an initial value circularly, as you suggested, by people foreseeing its potential usefulness for exchange. Dan was trying to say that this quote is strong evidence for Bitcoin as a store of value, but the part that he leaves out in the middle clearly states that Bitcoin is viewing this as a medium of exchange. This is not the only time that Dan is cherry-picking quotes from Satoshi. 
Another tweet, he quotes Satoshi saying, it might make sense just to get some in case it catches on. If enough people think the same way, that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Dan states that Satoshi here clearly highlights that Bitcoin's scarcity gives it value, as a store of value. Let's take a look at that quote in context. This is the full paragraph. So if you continue reading right where Dan left off, the very next sentence says, once it gets bootstrapped, there are so many applications if you could effortlessly pay a few cents to a website as easily as dropping coins into a vending machine. Now, that's about as strong an endorsement of the payment vision as possible. Now, it's not only the next sentence that completely changes the context. This is from an email, which earlier says things like, Bitcoin could be used for reward points, donation tokens, currency for games or micropayments for adult sites. It can be used in proof-of-work applications for services that could be almost free, but not quite. It can already be used for pay-to-send email. Subscription sites that need extra proof of work for their free trial so it doesn't cannibalize subscriptions could charge Bitcoins for the trial. So in the email that Satoshi sent that Dan is claiming is for store of value, he mentions a plethora of examples of Bitcoin being used for payments. In fact, this is something that you see a lot of when you read through all of Satoshi's writings. I count six separate occasions where Satoshi specifically endorses micropayments as a great use case for Bitcoin. I'm not going to go through all 38 sources, that would take way too long, but there's another one that's worth mentioning as well. Even though store value is never uttered by Satoshi, he did use the term medium of exchange, though only one time, but this one use is illuminating. It's from a Bitcoin talk thread about Bitcoin mining. Satoshi says, it's the same situation as gold and gold mining. The marginal cost of gold mining tends to stay near the price of gold. Gold mining is a waste, but that waste is far less than the utility of having gold available as a medium of exchange. I think the case will be the same for Bitcoin. The utility of the exchanges made possible by Bitcoin will far exceed the cost of the electricity used. Store of value proponents are fond of making analogies to Bitcoin like gold 2.0. And they like to quote the few times where Satoshi does something similar. But in this particular case, he's talking about Bitcoin as gold, but as a medium of exchange, not a store of value. There's a lot more evidence in the post that I'm not going to summarize in this video, but the case, in my opinion, is very strong. I end the post by asking store of value proponents 10 questions. And if there's anyone out there who really genuinely believes that Satoshi did build Bitcoin to act primarily as a store of value, I honestly want to hear your answers to these questions. If you make an honest attempt to answer these questions, or if you have other evidence of Satoshi saying something that supports a store of value, please let me know. I would love to hear what you have to say. So that's everything in this summary. I encourage you to dive into the post if you're interested. There's a lot more information in there. My personal opinion is that, yes, you should have a stash of Bitcoin, but you also shouldn't feel guilty spending it. After having read everything that Satoshi wrote, I'm confident that he would agree.